Cards with Carlo. Okay, this is James Barfield with your Urban Connection. And this is a channel that is often imitated, but never duplicated. And the reason why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, is because of the fact that on this show, we talk about issues that others won't touch. And tonight is gonna to be no different. We're going to talk about the painful hurt that is being committed by the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Now this was a commission that was set up under Governor Bill Graves in 1997 to serve the needs of the over 165,000 African Americans in the state of Kansas. Now, this makes them basically no different than any other or most of the other uh, African American Affairs Commissions throughout the country, which operate under the auspices of the governor. However, there are two things that set this commission apart from the others. Number one, this commission for the last 15 years or better has had no transparency with the African Americans throughout the state of Kansas. And as such, they've had no accountability. Now, the big problem here is that the Kansas African Americans get no reports whatsoever from this commission. The governor gets no reports. The secretary of appointments gets no reports. And the governor's chief of staff gets no reports. So nobody knows what's going on. And let me just give you one typical example. Nowhere is published the meeting dates for this commission. Nowhere are the agendas and there are hardly any minutes. So nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows what they're discussing. Nobody knows when they meet. And all of that, according to the bylaws, are supposed to be published one year in advance. So in other words, at the start of the fiscal year 2022, they're supposed to have the entire year of meeting dates set on the website. And if you look on the website right now, they're nowhere to be found. Now, the second part of this is that the state statute 74-9905 clearly lays out the duties and responsibilities of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. And none of those duties are being carried out. And it has folks across the state wondering what's going on. As a matter of fact, I'll read you a couple of letters here in a few moments. We have many people asking, why is it that hardly anybody in the state of Kansas over the last 10 to 15 years has even heard of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission? After all, in 2019, November 2019, I did a study and I did surveys of over 560 African Americans right here in the city of Wichita. And of 560, only 13 members of 13 respondents had ever heard of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Now, let me bring in my panel. I have Mr. Glenn Cassis. And Mr. Cassis, for a number of years, executive director of the most successful. African American Affairs Commission in the country. And welcome to the show, Mr. Kansas. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And also I have Mrs. Sheila Officer, who is the president of the Wichita Racial Profiling uh, Advisory Board. Thank you, Mrs. Sheila. Thank you for having me. And uh, next to her, we have Ms. Juanita Blackman, who is the founder of award-winning classes. Uh, she's a member of the USD 259. And welcome to the show, Mrs. Blackman Ridge. The pleasure to be here. Okay. Now, I want to read, first of all, I want to read before we begin. I just have a couple of letters here that will, that I want to read just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. First, I have a letter here from a gentleman in Kansas City. And this letter was written in, on uh, March of 2017. No, I'm sorry. This was December of 2018. And here's what he says. What exactly does this commission do? It's concerning to me that most African Americans in Kansas has never heard of you. What grants are being provided to the community? Do you have any projects 
that you can speak of. What are some accomplishments of this commission in the last year? I'll wait to hear your response. He never did get a response. Here's another one. And this one is from People of Color Political Think Tank and Action Coalition of Kansas. And this letter was written July 27th, 2019. And uh, I'll just read a part of this because I don't want to read this whole letter, but the point here is, she says that the group, the think tank and coalition also discuss that there is some concern in the community about the lack of visibility and presence of the Kansas African-American Affairs Commission. Okay, now here's one from Ms. Sheila Officer that was sent in March of 2013. And she asked, uh, in the state of Kansas and across the world, African-Americans face unique negative issues that have created a disparate impact on the lives of African-American communities. Mass incarceration, business of the, uh, businesses of the criminal justice system, the school to prison pipeline, and uh, Kansas and excessive force and racial profiling by a law enforcement officer. Now, she says, these are not new issues. They have long been in existence and have created an inequitable system which has a disparate impact on the daily lives of African Americans in Kansas. Resources, solutions, and action leadership should provide this. As a community, we expect it and are willing to do our share. We must all work collectively if the problems are going to be eliminated. CAC must improve their performance if they are to be the leaders who address and provide resources and resolutions for, Afri uh, for African American affairs. So again, the question is, why has the CAC been invisible in the African American community? In the progression of time, did the mission change? My answer is no, the mission did not change. Mm -hmm. What happened was that we, uh, when the governor had uh, brought this in under the governor's uh, umbrella with no accountability. That was the biggest mistake she could have made. And I'm sure she had good intentions. So let me start this off with you, Mr. Cassis. Uh, as the executive director of the Connecticut African American Affairs Commission, how do you respond to a commission that is, uh, has no transparency to offer and has no accountability. Can that possibly be an effective commission in your uh, site? Well, I, I don't see how it could be ineffective at all. Um, if it's not uh, living up to its mission, if it's not uh, uh, performing the functions as it's assigned by, uh, by statute, then it, it can't. Um, you, you pointed out that uh, there have been no reports, um, there's no uh, uh, studies being done, um, uh, so it's it just not, to me, it, it's, a, it's a, I hate to use the word, but it sounds like a sham. It looks like it's just a, uh, only on paper and, and not being functioned. Uh, I would ask, it, it, are funds, uh, uh, state funds of, uh, uh, allocated to this commission? And if so, yeah. um, it, so it does have a budget, um, then it, there seems to be no accountability. It does not seem that it's being, um, uh, follow through at all. I, I, I looked at the website. I looked at the uh, try to find you know, reports, uh, sort of bits and pieces from you know, many many years ago, but nothing that uh, seems to be of relevance. It seemed like the reports and other things were coming from another agency, um, you know, uh, regarding uh, African Americans. I, I would say, um, you know, to me, and I, I'm not an attorney, but um, it would seem to me that. Um, if it's not uh, being accountable, if it's not doing what it says it's supposed to do, and it's being and it receives uh, funding from the state, then a recourse might be to sue it, to sue the state, um, to indicate that um, you know, things are not being done, that they're in violation of, of their own statute. Well, you know, uh, that's very interesting for you to say that. Uh, and here's the deal. The governor is fully aware of everything that I just said. Hmm. Matter of fact, the former administration said to incoming uh, 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 commissioners that you're joining a group that does not do anything. And those were the exact words. Wow. That were used. 
okay? So this governor clearly knows about it because I've talked to her about it. The statute, the, the uh, Secretary of, of, of Appointments clearly knows about it. I've had three or four meetings with him. He knows it, but they don't do anything. The Black mm -hmm. Caucus knows about it. They don't do anything. So all of the legislators in this state know about this group and its ineffectiveness, but they've taken no action. So the point you make is a good one, and that is one that I have not given thought to, but certainly I will. Uh, now, uh, I just want to point, go, I want to switch now to the statute and talk about a little bit of what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and how long it's been since they've done any of this. Number one is, and these are the duties and responsibilities of this commission. Number one, gather and disseminate information and conduct hearings, better known as town hall meetings, conferences, and special studies on problems and programs concerning African Americans. Now, Sheila and Juanita and myself, yeah. we all know there has not been one single town hall meeting in the last 12 years. I didn't say weeks, I said 12 yeah. years. Not exactly. one single town hall meeting. Exactly. Now, if you come to the racial profile and you'll get a town hall meeting. Well, you'll get it in every <laughs> other board that I know of, okay? But here, like I said, no accountability. So let's move on down. Coordinate, assist, and cooperate with the efforts of state departments and agencies to serve the needs of African-Americans especially in the areas of culture, education, employment, health, housing, welfare, and recreation. Now, Mrs. Uh, Juanita, you work in USD 259. Do you know of any involvement by the Kansas African American Affairs Commission regarding education? I plead the fifth. I have heard of nothing. <laughs> OK. OK. And the same will go to you. Uh, uh, she's the <laughs> uh, no, and if I may piggyback on something else that you said uh, regarding, you know, their statutory requirements, even in, in going back to their mission statement, um, they were to, buy, to devise strategies that would address the concerns of the African American community. One failure. The second one is they would serve as a conduit for programs, grants, research, policy advice for state and local organization. Failure number two because they have failed to do that. And it's not like that these issues have not been in the forefront of the news because they have. Now, um, and I'll let you continue and, and then I'll go on from there. Okay, we move on to the next one. Develop, coordinate and assist other public and private associations and organizations with understanding the problems of African-Americans. Now, to my knowledge, that is not and has not for the last 12 years been addressed. Exactly. Is anybody in disagreement with me? Failure yeah. number three. Okay, <laughs> okay. Number four. Hold on before you go to number four. Okay. Who appoints these do nothing commissioners? Okay, the governor appoints three. Uh, the, uh, the house minor majority leader appoints one. Mm -hmm. The speaker of the house appoints one, that's five. The House Minority Leader points one, that's six. And um, uh, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head who the other, but the other one is a member of the state legislature. Yeah, four of our uh, legislative appointments and the governor are three appointments. So you three have by the governor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And four by the legislature. They're failing to vet yes. people who actually produce. I'm sorry? They're failing to uh, present people that produce for the Black community. Well, you know, I think that's very good. And uh, I'll tell you, in my opinion, this governor knows about this infallacy and this ineffectiveness, but excuse my language, she doesn't give a you know what, okay? Mm -hmm. She just mm -hmm. puts people in place. They don't ever drill. Into, and let me just tell you, three out of the, I mentioned we had four executive branches. Three of them have not been qualified according to the state's requirements regarding education and work experience. But they were black and they were friends of these governors and they put them in, all right? They don't expect anything. They, let me just say something to you. 
and I'm gonna stop, but I wanted to hold this for later, but I actually wanna tell you something, just to show you where the governor is and what the governor thinks about us. And this was in November uh, 20... Garfield, Let's do the governor of justice and mention her name so that the people at home will know who, what governor well, would talk I, I intend to do that. This is Governor Laura Kelly. And this is what she said when she made an appointment to the commission on November 27th of 2019. Now, in spite of everything we've already talked about, we, we're not even halfway through yet. The governor said this, this commission does important work in addressing concerns unique to the African-American community in Kansas, Governor Kelly said. Are we supposed to be that dumb and that stupid as a race of people, as a group of people, that we can't see for ourselves how ineffective this group is and has been? Okay, now let's move on to number four. Propose new programs concerning African American. This is not being done. It has Damn. not been done for the last 12 years. Number five, evaluate existing programs and propose legislation concerning African Americans. Not being done. Number six, stimulate the public's awareness of the concerns and problems of African Americans by conducting a program of public education. Are you kidding me? Number seven, conduct training programs and for the community leadership and service projects plan. Okay, now, there you have it. Those are the duties that they are not doing. And they are, they are required by state statute to in effect these duties to uplift educate the African-Americans throughout the state of Kansas. And they're not doing it. And it's not getting any better. So it's time that we shine a light. It's time we find out. As the gentleman said from Kansas City on the first letter I read to you, why is it that here after this organization has been in effect since 1997, and here we are in 2022, and 75 to 80 percent of the African Americans in the state of Kansas has never heard of. Something is wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Cassis, you asked about the budget. The government has funded this organization to the tune of $250,000, which was implemented initially in 1997. And here in 2022, the budget is still $250,000. With one staff member. Now, I, I, in all transparency, let me say I was a member of this commission for seven years. When I first joined in 2008, we had three full time staff members. Today, we have one. That's the executive director who is paid $75,000 a year to run this organization effectively, proficiently, and responsibly. And as we stated, there's no transparency, there's no accountability, there's no communication. Sheila, in 2017, I believe it was, you and I signed listservs to get weekly newsletters. Yes. Is that right? Yes. How many have you received? From none. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, none. I didn't even none. get the okay. uh, correspondence now, from the governor's please. office. Now, I can't even get a phone call in. Now, let me just tell you something, just to show you. I'm in touch with several African American affairs commissions throughout the country. Every single week, I get weekly reports from the state of New Mexico, from the state of Minnesota, from the state of Iowa, and from the state of Washington every week on my cell phone, I get them. I have not received a weekly report from the Kansas African American Affairs Commissions in 12 years. Wow. This wow. is a major problem, folks. And it's not going to get any better until we share some light on it. And until we as African Americans throughout the state start to make some noise. And the best way I know 
is we've got to make this the focus of this governor's race this year. Otherwise, we're being ignored, we're being disrespected, mm -hmm. and I'm, I've had enough. You know the old saying, enough is enough. We're fed up and I ain't taking no more. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and that's where we're at. So now, Mr. Cassis, if you were advising this group, having heard what I've said so far, what would your advice be to this African American Affairs Commission? Well, I, I can think of a number of things. By the way, there are three other things that are on that list that I read that, that you didn't bring up that were supposed to be part of the mission. Um, one is accept contributions and assist uh, in effectuating uh, effectuation of the section and seek enlist in cooperation with private, charitable, religious, yes. blah, blah, blah. We talk about solicit and receive and expend federal funds to effectuate the purpose of this act and also uh, establish advisory committees uh, on special subjects. Now, it's difficult for a, a, a commission to do all those things. And that's why you have partnerships. That's why uh, when we were uh, commissioned, we uh, utilized other departments, use uh, higher education and other groups that were doing studies to help we partner with them and, and brought those things to bear. Um, I think in your case, um, you need to, sh as you say, shine light on it. And that shining light can begin with, uh, you know, sitting down with the, uh, with the uh, press, uh, whether it be uh, TV, radio, uh, media, whatever, discuss with them and, and bring, bring, shed some light on it with them. The mm -hmm. press uh, is the, really the third part of, uh, or actually the, the fourth part of government. They shine a light on issues especially uh, issues that are, are relevant, that are important. And when you talk about dollars and cents when money's not being used appropriately, the press is always willing to, to uh, you know, throw some light on that and ask questions that per perhaps you can't ask. Um, you can ask them, you may not get an answer, but the press has to get answers. Otherwise they keep digging deeper, deeper and deeper. And you may find uh, it's very uncomfortable for legislators or government officials to, um, they just kind of back off. They got to come to an agreement. They got to come to an answer. Um, I mentioned earlier, um, it sounds like it's right for a suit that um, uh, because they're not living up to this, uh, the, uh, the statute, which affects uh, communities of color, in this case, African Americans. These things are not being accomplished, not being addressed. And by statute, they're supposed to be addressed. And if they're not being addressed, um, that is. Uh, you know, I'd say a civil rights issue, mm -hmm. whether it be the NAACP or ACLU or another uh, group uh, of attorneys and lawyers, whether it be uh, law school students out of uh, out of one of the universities, this should be brought to this should be brought to bear, and this kind of thing uh, is is unconscionable. I mean, we're talking about stuff that uh, should have happened uh, uh, in the 50s or 60s, uh, and what happens is you know, history shows that people just kind of turn their backs on it and don't do it, and as a result, we suffer for it. And I think the people in, uh, in, in Kansas, uh, African Americans, and other people, uh, majority of people are missing out on the uh, value that, um, that can come from a commission. A commission that brings to light things that are, uh, that are uh, shortchanging people, uh, African Americans, when you bring their light and they, they benefit from it, so does the rest of society. Um, you're only using part of your uh, population to improve life in, in, uh, in Kansas if you're not bringing everybody into the light. There are issues of dealing with education, labor, um, employment, health disparities mm -hmm. that are not yes. addressed, exactly. not being focused on, if they're not uh, in, the, in the lives of people. And, and it's just like the African American Affairs Commission, is there to bring that information out? Just ask questions and make sure that uh, those things are being so people are benefiting that they're living uh, equally. And I think that this is a, to me, this be a strong case to, to uh, you know, take that legal action. So, Mr. Case, is the shoe officer? Would you consider this to be a class action litigation since the people were damaged by the neglect and the ignorance of this particular uh, commission and uh, this particular state? I, I'm not an attorney, but to me, it sounds like it would be a class action. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. What, what, what does the uh, um, attorney general, mm -hmm. you know, although they're part of the administration, 
they they should be on the, they should be on this. If not, then you then you need to go outside other sources to, to impress on this. But that's mm -hmm. it's a violation to me. It's a violation, especially well, for the time. It's, it's interesting you say that because the uh, other party that's involved in this election for governor is the attorney general. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how he would respond to that, but certainly that is something for us to take into consideration. Now, let me say this to you. Uh, Mr. Cassis, when you were executive director of the uh, Connecticut African American Affairs Commission, sir, I know for a fact, I've read, as a matter of fact, I've got one of your annual reports here, and uh, uh, and you guys, and, and this is your annual report here. And you see that's for 2015. Now, one of the things I happen to know, sir, is that you mentioned about health. And I do know, and I got this from you and your organization, that the American Cancer Society, the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association will gladly collaborate with any African-American Affairs Commission in the country at no charge and provide clinics, okay? And, and do uh, blood testing or, or do various testing. And we don't utilize any of that. And yet every day we have African-Americans dying from diabetes, from heart uh, uh, disease, from cancer. And this organization pays no attention to that. I mean, there's no excuse for that, you know? Well, now, we, uh, we ran forums um, throughout the state to uh, alert people about things like uh, heart disease and, and cancer, or basically health disparities that, that exist in the community. Yes, so we did, we did it in the, in the legislature and did it outside the legislature. We brought it to the folks in, in, in the communities. And, and can you just imagine, sir, that how, because I've never seen, this is the only African-American Affairs Commission I have seen, and I've seen a lot of them, that does not communicate with their people. No town hall meetings. How do you find out what the issues are, what the concerns are, if you don't get out and do some outreach and talk to the people? How do you do and that? And Mr. Barfield, this is Sheila. I'd like to know um, how their budget is justified. If the budget is $250,000, you're paying an employee $775,000. Um, what justifies your budget if they're not reaching out to the community, they have not accomplished and satisfied their mission statement, then, you know, and no reports have been filed, that's just money going down to drain. So uh, my question becomes in, where is the reports? And then if we have one, what does the report say about the budget and how the money is utilized? Taxpayer dollars, by the way. That's a good question. What happens? Well, I can tell you one thing right now. There has not been an annual report by the Kansas African American Affairs Commission for the last 10 years. Now, let's well, go back. In terms, of, in terms of the budget, though, that, that should come, she should be able to get budget figures out of the legislature or the OMB. How do they continue to be refunded when they can't present? A budget. A justification for the prior years. Yes. Appropriations should have that, should be, should be a part of the appropriations committee. Well, I can tell you that basically what you have here is nobody in the legislature, nobody in the governor's office, and nobody in the public knows what's going on, doesn't know what the head, the left hand from the right hand is doing. They don't know because I said there is no accountability. So they're not talking. See, we don't even know what they discuss when they do meet. We don't, know any of that. we don't know what the agenda is going into the meeting. We have no idea, no accountability. All of that is supposed to be on the website. These meetings are supposed to be public. This is a taxpayer funded organization. And as such, they have a duty to be transparent and accountable. See, this is where the media and the press can come in because they could ask for FOIA or Freedom of Information, and that should be available. So your, your, your people in the press, investigative reporters, should be able to, you know, come to the to come, come to the, the executive record of the commission and ask for the FOIA, through FOIA to get the, the records. If that's not, if the executive director can't get it, then you move up the ladder. 
And who does the who does the executive director report to? Well, like I said, we've had four in the last 12, 15 years. Yeah, but who who does that person now report to? Who, who do they, they don't. That's what I'm telling you. They don't. I'm telling you, the governor gets no reports. The secretary of appointment gets no reports. But, Nobody but, gets the public doesn't get any reports. They don't file any reports. Correct. But who does that executive director report to? Who who's their supervisor? Who who's well their... the supervisor is the appointments, the secretary of appointments. The secretary of appointments. So that person goes to the secretary of appointment. Yes. So then maybe the, the, the press needs to go and say, I want to see a report. If the, if the executive director doesn't have it. And again, that's what the press can put heat on people. Well, sir. Let me just tell you, I've met with the Secretary of Appointments and I asked him directly, do you get any reports? Which I already knew the answer to because I've been on the commission, okay? But he admitted, no, he doesn't get any reports. Neither does the governor. No. So for the governor to make this asinine statement that she makes, she has no idea what they're doing, what, what, what they're not doing. She, ha she probably has no even idea what they're supposed to be doing. So it's a it's a sad it's a sad pitiful situation that we as African Americans have allowed to go on for this long, and part of the problem is that so many people have never heard of this organization, and then many of those that have heard of it do not know what they're supposed to be doing, and that's how they're getting over. Yeah, because people just assume that you know, if you're an organization and you've been around for that long, they just assume that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yep. And, and you so, know what happens? You know what the definition of assume is. <laughs> yeah, we're right. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> people just assume that people are doing what's until uh, it takes uh, warriors like yourself, like the warriors that are here today to unravel the unaccountability, the uncountable. Well, we have to do something. And the main thing I wanted to do was to shed some light on this, let the public know that they're getting shafted, they're paying tax dollars for something they're receiving absolutely no benefits from. And right now, today, there's only one African-American that's benefiting from the Kansas African-American Affairs Commission, and that is the executive director, who's benefiting to the tune of $75,000. So, so, so I'm gonna go back to what you said, Mr. Cassis. When we talk about filing a lawsuit, who do we file that with? You say in the ACLU, perhaps, or? Uh, or NAACP. NAACP. That's that's out. That's out. Okay. <laughs> I <will laughs> that's out. Not here in Wichita. Folks. <laughs> Why not? Well, because they're just as ineffective as this organization we're talking about. All right, then what about law, law school students? Law school mm -hmm. students? Yeah. That's a good idea, sir. Yeah. That's a good idea. You and then Washburn, yes. Yeah, Washburn, Washington, Washburn, a law school we have here in Topeka is the first thing that comes to mind with me. And the ACLU also. This could be uh, with law school students. This could be a uh, um, a case study, even. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I would certainly look at that as a possibility. If, you, if the NAACP is not uh, proactive on something like this, then maybe that's the route. Um, yeah. could be even uh, people who've been damaged by um, by not having the, the resources available to them. I mean, perhaps. Uh, um, uh, Religious organization is active. Any activist organization, you know, has has some pull, and that's something that they could you know take a look at. Sure, you know, I think coalition of, of folks, but you know, that that would be my strong recommendation. So, well, sir, I'm, I'm going to just tell you, I want to thank you. I'm glad I had you on here because you've given me some ideas that I certainly didn't have, and uh, mm -hmm. but but certainly I'm certainly going to look into that. Now, let me just get back to one other thing. There was a report issued here about 30 days ago that in the state of Kansas, 60% of the 
of the fourth grade students in the Kansas educational system, public education system, could not read by the fourth grade. Now, I know, and you all know, while this study did not break it down by race, but if we look at across the board, that number is 60%, we have to assume, and I don't want to use that word, but we have to recognize that for African-American students, that number's got to be at least 20% higher. And this is one of the responsibilities and the duties of this Kansas African-American Affairs Commission is to look into the educational system, to seek what the problems might be, to find workable solutions. We've got on this board a school superintendent, the district superintendent from Lawrence. We've got a former school principal from Topeka. And we've got a part-time substitute teacher from Wichita, all on this board, not addressing the educational uh, uh, fulfillment of our Black African-American students in this public school system. That's a shame. It really is. You know, well, Mr. Barfield, if, I think if we look at, look at uh, their lack of, of performance, um, not, not just this year, but throughout the years, even going back to um, um, 20, as far as 2018, um, we see the, the neglect um, of them uh, doing their job performance. Education is not the only area in which they failed to act upon. We had um, the driver's license suspension bill that definitely had a disparate impact on communities of color. You have the inequities in the healthcare system that has a disparate impact on the communities of color. You have the prison, um, the school to prison pipeline with the um, uh, suspension and expulsions of uh, children of color um, that has had a disparate impact on the communities of color. So the list goes on. And not only were they charged with addressing concerns that deal specifically with the African-American communities, they were charged with advising state and local organizations on how to make those changes that are unique to African-American community. They have failed on all fronts. So education well, is not the only arena. Let me say one thing. I totally agree yeah, with you. I, I totally agree with you. And I'm not saying that's the only area that they failed. As I just addressed with uh, uh, Mr. Cassidy, in mm -hmm. the health area, yes. in the health okay. arena, they've fallen yeah. far short. Yes. Okay? In economic development, far short. Okay? So all of it, they've just dropped the ball. Let's just put it to yes. simple. They've dropped the ball on this whole uh, ball of duties and responsibilities. Exactly. That's what's happened. Okay? So for a continuous no, period I'm not of time. singling out education. Yes. I was just okay. pointing out that this report that came out certainly should have raised eyebrows within the African American Affairs Commission. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. You know, so mm -hmm. no, I'm not uh, okay. suggesting that there's any one issue. It's across the board. This it is. is and it's ongoing. Board. Yes, and ongoing. Yeah. You're right. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, so we are yeah. familiar with organizations that are receiving funding and not serving the communities that they are intended to. We're not only addressing this commission, but we're addressing some other uh, entities that are not doing what they're supposed to do with the funds that they receive. Well, here, here's the thing, uh, Juanita. I'm in total agreement with you. But the reason I bring the light on this one because some of these organizations do not receive uh, government funding. This one does. This one operates out of the office of the governor, mm -hmm. okay? So we certainly expect accountability and transparency yeah. from this organization on all of these issues. And we expect to see reports. We wanna know what your accomplishments were and what mm -hmm. effect, and here's a word I use, impact. If yes. you're not having an impact on your community, you're not doing your job. Exactly. You know, it's as simple as that. And they have no impact. You cannot say you have an impact when 80% of your people have never heard of your organization. So I don't have, have an impact. I'd have an impact if you're invisible. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, and that's what they've been. I mean, like I said, 
not a single town hall meeting, or if you want to call it listening session or conference, not a single one in 12 years. Not even a call record of people that have called in and requested assistance. Okay, so there yeah. you go. Where is your email <laughs> like? What are your postcards saying? The postcards? <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> well, with that kind of money, you ought to be able to send out a postcard. They don't send out anything. They don't, listen, I remember, and I thought I had it here, but I, oh yeah, here it is. Now, when this was an effective organization, this was the annual report that I got in the mail. And you see the date? 2000. <laughs> okay, that's the last one. And we got these in the mail before the internet, okay? And now they have internet and they don't do as much as they did back in 2000 when they were mailing them by postage, okay? So you talk about a postcard, are you kidding me? Well, that I mentioned postcard, they gave you a chance to show them. <laughs> Okay. So, Mr. Barfield, yes. Uh, now that we address their failures, their uh, deficiencies, their lack of performance, what then becomes our next step um, in, in uh, resolving or an attempt to resolve or to help them improve their deficiencies or to bring light to their deficiencies? What then is the new plan? Well, look, as I just said, We've got people that are dying every day. Now, listen, a lot of these people die for lack of knowledge, lack of information, mm -hmm. lack of education. Mm -hmm. That's what this organization is supposed to be providing. Yes. Okay? So they're, you know, when they're not providing any of it, you know, hey, you're liable out there. I mean, you know, yes. you're not fulfilling yes. your statutory obligations and duties mm -hmm. and responsibilities. I mean, that's all you need right there. Yes. Yeah. And if anybody, let me just say this. If anybody wants to dispute anything that I've said, I challenge you. No Go one can. Well, well, look at their it. website. Yeah. You get your first clue on the website. Mm -hmm. No public meetings on that website. No agenda on that website. No mm -hmm. minutes on that website, OK? And on the bottom of that website, it says, sign up for weekly list serve. Yes. You don't get it. You sign up, but you never get it. You never hear from them. So you've got a failure on all aspects of this commission. Again, I think you need a larger microphone. Um, and again, the press, you know, is, you know, blue mm -hmm. stuff. Um, um, you can also use social media. You know, mm -hmm. Part of getting the message out and asking the question, what is the Kansas African American um, Commission? You know, those kind of things people start to look at and, and get you know, gets hot for people. Again, I think really think sitting down with the uh, with, you know, with the media who do, does investigative reporting, sitting down with them, explain the same thing that we just talked about, or showing this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, conference that we're having today, and you know that should pique their interest. Okay. Yes. Your, well, your microphone is only can go but so far. There's I know. Yes. I know. I understand. Um, I fully understand, sir. And but my perspective, this is only the beginning. Yeah. This is just mm -hmm. the start. This is not the end. Mm -hmm. This is just the start. Okay. Amen. And yes. I don't have any problems, as they know, contacting the media, involving the media. And I would like to do it on a national level, even if I could. But we have to address this issue and if we don't, then we are getting exactly what we deserve. Because technically, and, as community yeah. servants, we are mandatory reporters, and so we must report this. And, and be prepared. In, in this in this uh, country right now, there's a lot of uh, blowback, pushback, whatever you want to call it, against things like African American this or this group or this group or that group. You see it all over the place. But all I'm saying is, be prepared deal with that element because they will come after you because they'll say why do we need it if it's not doing anything why do we need it that's what that's the way the argument will be so you really have to be really fortified to you know to explain why you know, this is important and we, we talked about some of the reasons why it's important mm -hmm. well you know uh, mr gasses 
See, here's the deal. Here's why I'm attacking this right now, because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm afraid that our next governor is going to be a Republican. Now, mm -hmm. uh, and as you said, the atmosphere we're in right now, that would be the first question they would ask. Now, let's take a look. As I stated to you, when I first joined this commission, we were meeting 10 times a year, three full-time employees. Now, the governor, Sam Brownback, was a Republican. And he came in. And he came in with the knowledge that this African American Affairs Commission was ineffective. So what did he do? He cut the meetings from 10 a year to four a year. He cut the staff from three full-time to one full-time. He cut the budget from 250,000 down to 125,000. Now he stopped short of completely eliminating this organization. Now this is my opinion in my view, because he didn't want to be called a racist. That's the only reason. Because at the same time that he cut the budget and the staff for this organization, he completely eliminated the Arts Commission. Completely eliminated it. So I'm convinced that the only reason he didn't eliminate this organization was because of the fact he didn't want to be labeled a racist. Mm -hmm. And I am right now, as you say, with what's going on, the next Republican governor would not care about that. And they're looking out for the taxpayers. And they will consider this even $250,000, which is not a lot of money. The state of New Mexico, which has 40% of the African Americans in the whole state that Kansas does, has an annual budget of over $800,000. Mm. And they have about 10 full-time employees, including one member that is nothing more than an outreach member. And mm. And they file annual reports, extensive annual reports every year. Okay? As does the state of Minnesota, as does the state of Washington, as does the District of Columbia, and as does several others, all except the Kansas African Affairs Commission. Now, the executive well, director, what city is the director? The executive director in this are they in Kansas City or no? This one, this one is in. I believe it's Olathe. You you mean where she live at? Yeah. Yeah, she resides in Olathe. I believe it is. Now, has there been outreach to her as well? I have had conversations with her. I've had a conversation in the office with her and the uh, uh, chief of staff. I've had those meetings myself. So yes, we know, as I stated to you, that everybody in the governor's office knows about this situation, knows about the deficiencies, knows mm -hmm. about the problems, but they choose not to do anything. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't believe there's a single other organization or advisory board in the governor's administration that receives the same kind of treatment as we do. I don't believe it. But we are taken for granted. Mm -hmm. okay? I mark my words, within two to three months, she'll be marching up in our churches here in Wichita and Topeka mm -hmm. and Kansas City. Yes. Okay? Thinking we should be jumping for joy to reelect her. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to get more for our votes. That's right. Right. Okay? That's right. I mean, we don't have to vote for the opponent. We can just sit this election out. Yeah. Okay? But we've got to get something for our vote. We've mm -hmm. got to be, demand more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't ask, you don't get. You have yes. not because you ask not. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you know. So basically, listen, I want to thank you all for coming. And uh, I appreciate your input. But I want to, wanted to do this as a panel because I don't want them saying, which I know they're going to say, that this is all about Barfield, OK? And, uh, Barfield, nobody's complaining, all right? But you see, I'm the one that's been on the inside. So I'm the one that knows what they're supposed to be doing. 
Right. Most of them don't know that. So they think they're doing a good job. As one of you said, because of the fact the organization's been around since 1997. Mm -hmm. But it's been effective since 2020. Okay. Right. So right. do you all have any closing remarks? Ineffective since when? Well, you just saw, I just showed you, you the said last 2000. report was in 2020. I thought you said 2000. I'm sorry. You, yeah, 2020. What did I say? You said 2020, but it was, your report said 2000. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 2000. yeah this yeah. annual report was in 2000. We have not had one since then. Okay. Oh, We've not had a town hall meeting in the last 12 years. Okay. Uh, we've not had uh, any annual reports for I don't know how long, okay? And we've not had any uh, uh, reaching out. We've not had any special studies. We've not had any uh, any of the stuff that is listed on that statute. None of that. Okay, now, if someone had. wanted to reach out to the governor's office to speak about their concern, Sheila, how easy is it to contact the governor? <laughs> truly ridiculous and I thank you for asking me that because just this past week I phoned the governor's office four times four days in a row stayed on hold for over 30 minutes and as soon as a live person answered the phone it disconnected each time now coincidence I think not so to answer your question it's going to be rather hard to get in contact with anybody with a heartbeat no, it is not. Hold up, hold up. Let me let me give you some information. Well, maybe I'm dialing the wrong number. No, let, let me tell you something, Sheila. I'm going to provide you and any other interested party with the phone number and the email address for the governor's chief of staff and the governor's appointments secretary. Okay. If you want them, I will provide you with them. So you don't have to continue wasting time on the phone. You can send them an email and they'll have it within seconds. Okay. Well, I did send it. I did send an email. Okay. Yeah. Did you, I did send did an email. Did you get a response at all? I didn't get a response from them, but my response, my my request for them was to contact a local organization, county organization, to which I believe they did because after I contacted them and left that email, then they contacted the respective party to whom I told them to contact. So, but they failed to contact me. Okay. Okay. Well, who did you email, if I might ask? Um, well, I don't want to say. Okay. But okay. it was a it was a family matter um, for someone. Oh, okay. I, having, thought you um, meant, I thought you. No, he was saying, who did you email at the governor's office? Oh, um, let's see here. Um, gosh, uh, it was the Bonsman's person. That's who it was. The governor's as Bonsman's person, the and that Bonsman? website. The governor's the go what? A, 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 a bombsman's person. Okay. A bombsman's person. Yes, that was uh, on their website. That's who I sent the email to. Um, and uh, again, the company did get, or the organization did get a response from the governor's office, but I personally did not get a response. Okay. Well, well and it's you know, important that number. you get a response because you're the person who's sending it, and you don't know how they even responded to that exactly. Person. To the organization yes yeah i have no idea what was said that could have been a buddy buddy a heads up yeah but then again i called four times so if, and if, if you have you another call, number that it will be more other effective mr barfield i would greatly appreciate it okay fine and i'm going to tell you one other thing i think it would be good for us to reach out to our local politicians uh -huh. yes Fosco, mrs finney Mm -hmm. And old Hobson, all should be contacted and let them know our dismay with the ineffectiveness of this Kansas African American Affairs Commission. And see, we should we deserve an answer from all of those people. Absolutely, Most definitely. definitely. Most definitely. All right. I'm gonna hit the share button so that I Please can do. Yes. Please do. Host disabled participant screening sharing. The uh, the host has to uh, give you permission. I just ship it over to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. James, you have to let, uh, go in and let her share. Okay. Hit the screen share. No. Go to uh, go to uh, participants. 
-hmm. Okay. And then uh, highlight her name. Okay, and... I got it. Okay. And mm -hmm. then, uh, the so what? Okay, award winner. What do I do then? Just hit. Let her be, be the host. Hit more. Yeah. Oh. Okay, make host. Okay. Make her the host. There you go. Now she can share. Okay, well, not shit. So let me try it again. Okay, you are now the host. So if you go down to the bottom and, and want to and click on share. What do you mm -hmm. want to share? Uh, what do I want to share? The application or the desktop? Whatever you want to share. Wherever you have I think your the desktop. Your desktop. Don't you have something on your desktop you want to share? Yeah, your entire screen. Okay. What will it be on your Facebook page, James? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Where this else can I? Put it? I this think I might need to share it after the fact. Okay. If you, if okay. you hit share, you should see files underneath. That, yeah, I, I, I saw that, but then when I tried to share it, it looked like it blocked my screen. So yeah. Once I, I end this, once I end this recording, it won't share. I can tell you that right now. It won't. No. Well, just yeah. send it. Maybe you just have to just send it to him. Yeah, just send it to us. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Let Thank me you all very much. go back and then change the host back so that I can. Uh, uh, I will put his name in the uh, the participants and let him. And give him okay, I got it back now. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Okay. All right, is there any closing? In the audience, uh, Mr. Barfield, is there a number that if anyone wants to get a hold of the governor's office and won't have to wait, are you willing to share that out to the listening audience or is that just for us? Well, I prefer to share it to you all first and then we'll see what we get in terms of uh, feedback from the audience members. And all right. I will be able to provide anybody that wants it, I'll be able to provide it for you. All Email right. and phone number. Okay, appreciate that. And also, this is why you're signing off. And also, I'd like to say to anybody, yes. to, hey, subscribe to this channel. Okay, if you like the program, because we we're going to be bringing you more of this type of programming, because we do something that the local newspapers don't do, the local TV channels don't do, and we're the only ones that do this kind of information. With that said, Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. And Mr. Cassis, again, I want to thank you for the information you provided me this evening, sir. Thank you again, Mr. Cassis. We appreciate it. Thank you it. very much for inviting me. It's nice to meet you, sir. It's good to meet you, too. Great. Thank you. Hope we come across we'll, each other again. And we'll yes, be sir. in touch, sir. Very good. Okay, that's it. Another edition nice of you. Your Urban Connection. Thank you. Thank you.